take a look at this one. Now this one didn't come around for two more years. It took Morgan a little a little bit of time to collect these mutants. And what he got was two different mutant varieties. One with a black body, like we see here, compared to the normal wild type. And vestigial wings, which basically means that these puny little wings never developed into the, the full wings. These things can't fly. So you're not going to find these in the wild. So we use the plus signs to mean wild type. Little b for black body, little v for vestigial wings. He bred these mutants until he had purebreds uh, with both mutations, which we'll call double mutants. So he took this double mutant female, bred it with a wild type male, and he got, not surprisingly, a heterozygous of both. And since Mutant, the mutant alleles are recessive, its appearance is completely wild type. So nothing, nothing too exciting, just like what we see here. Well, just like this, what we see here. Now, what he did with these, he took it and bred it back with its mute, double mutant mother. So, his theory is, remember he's testing the chromosomal theory of inheritance. They know what chromosomes are. They combine. One from mom, one from dad. They come together and make the new chromosome for the new individual. But now, remember this? This mother can only donate a chromosome with a little b mutation and a little v mutation, like we see here. Little v, little b. Now, Thomas Morgan is thinking if these alleles are located on the chromosomes, well, there's a lot of inheritable traits. These flies only have four chromosomes. So, some of these traits are going to end up being on the same chromosome which means some of these mutations might end up being on, some, on the same chromosome. So, he starts thinking, if this is the case, this, these new generation of flies, or let's go back to this fly, this fly, it's obviously going to get one of these from dad, one of these from dad, one of these from mom, going to come together, so he'll have one normal chromosome and one double mutant chromosome, like we see here. All right. So he takes this fly, breeds it back with its double mutant mother. Now this is where the real test comes in. So here's what the mother can offer. The mother can only offer double mutant chromosome. So that's going to go to both of these. These are two possibilities right here. The dad can donate one double mutant chromosome or one totally wild type, double normal chromosome. So when they come together, it's going to be one of these two possibilities. If the chromosome theory is right, you're not going to have a vestigial wing, double homozygous, along with a black body heterozygous because these two chromosomes are separate and there's not going to be switching. So he runs his test. This fly back with its double mutant. 965, double normal, in appearance, that is heterozygous. 944, double mutants. But then 185 and 206 where the chromosomes have somehow flip-flopped. Now this doesn't make sense. He's trying to figure out if Mendel's right or if the chromosome theory is right. What this shows is that neither of them are right. He has to start rethinking. And this is going to be the theme a lot. Things are never going to be as obvious as and straightforward as they seem. But eventually, with the help of Alfred Sturbent, who we're going to learn about next, Thomas Morgan figured it out. He realized that that these genes are on separate chromosomes, and they are located here, 
but that these genes were somehow capable of switching somewhere during mitosis. And for that, he ended up winning the Nobel Prize in medicine in 1933.